Here are moments when cocky fighters got wrecked and humbled by their opponents. These days in MMA, being loud and brash is often seen as a sign of confidence. Yet more often than not, it's the quieter guy in the room who ends up being the real threat. As they say, the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. And the next eight cocky fighters found out just how true that is, the hard way. First up, it's Leandro Silva versus Marek Mazik. At the Octagon Underground boxing event in May 2022, Silva took on the Slovakian sensation, Marek Mazik. The first round was all about Silva showing off his moves. The injury we teased about. I mean, the guy was dancing in there like it was a disco. But the party didn't last long, because the Slovak fighter had a surprise knockout waiting for him in the second round. We oh. big left oh. hand lands. Oh. Oh. Now Bobby Green tried something similar against someone way above his level and learned that tough lesson. When Bobby Green stepped into the octagon with Islam Mahachov, Mahachov wasn't the UFC lightweight champion yet, however he was the most intimidating contender in the division on a nine-fight winning streak. The Dagestani fighter was dominating everyone with his wrestling-heavy style, earning praise from everyone except Bobby Green. Green thought Mahachov was boring and one-dimensional. With Islam, he does what he does, but to be honest, it's kind of boring. You know, even if he getting finishes, it's still been boring. And of course, that he'd beat him. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Let's bring that shit. Bring that shit. Bring that shit. That's what we do. You got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. All right, gentlemen. I'm not going nowhere, bro. Thank you. Five rounds. Let's go. Mahachov promised to let his actions speak in the cage. Green still wasn't impressed with Mahachov's strength and skill. In fact, he even hinted that Mahachov's success might be due to performance-enhancing drugs. I on my YouTube, right? And I found this little video. And it said Islam had a little trouble with drugs. But I don't see people talking about him. Imagine if you gave someone steroids from the age of 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, how strong you would be. People were like, like, he was really strong. It makes sense now. Now, while confidence is great, overconfidence can be self-destructive, as this next fighter found out the hard way. Jason Solomon, known for his swagger, put on a show before stepping into the cage for his fight against Amitesh Chowby. He strutted, taunted, and engaged in a full-blown intimidation routine before the fight officially began. It was all confidence until Chowby's fist turned the party sour in just nine seconds. He's hurt! He's hurt! He's hurt! He's hurt! He's out! Unbelievable! Jason went from the cockiest strut to the quickest knockout, and the lesson here is clear, Overconfidence is self-destructive. That brings us to Joanna Jendracic versus Rose Namajunas. At one point in time, UFC strawweight champion Joanna Jendracic was considered the best female fighter in the world. However, her success got to her head, and she started calling herself the Boogie Woman for some reason. Boogie Woman is coming tomorrow, and she doesn't know what's coming. Against Rose Namajunas, Jendracic became a relentless trash talker targeting her opponent's struggles with mental health. In contrast, Nama Yunus chose to remain silent, though she did say a prayer during the face-off. The MMA god seemed to answer Nama Yunus' prayer at UFC 217, where she exercised her demons by dropping Yendrachik early and knocking her out cold. Let's go! I mean, that is clean! Astral travel! Despite her pre-fight bravado, Yendrachik took the loss gracefully and gave credit where it was due. Congrats to Rose. Uh, Rose. I'm happy for her. Uh, but I will be stronger, you know. It was not personal. As a multiple-time defending champion, Yendrachik earned an immediate rematch. But Nama Yunus also emerged victorious in the rematch by unanimous decision. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still! Now, just like Yendrachik, Badahari was another dominant champion who received some serious humbling. In the lead-up to the match, Badahari couldn't resist showing off his pushing skills during the stare-down with Arkadush. 
In September 2021, the two fighters squared off in Rotterdam, and Hari appeared to be having a field day, knocking his opponent down three times with body shots. You'd think he was feasting on a buffet of victory. However, Arkadush had other plans. He served up a perfect left high kick that left Hari flatter than a pancake. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? So anyway, like Hari, this Irish mad lad was also taught a lesson. After steamrolling everyone in the UFC featherweight division, Conor McGregor decided to move up to lightweight to face the then-champion Rafael dos Anjos in 2016. Unfortunately, the Brazilian pulled out due to injury, but the show went on with Nate Diaz stepping in as the last-minute replacement. The fights that took place at featherweight had an electrifying build-up, with McGregor using his psychological warfare against the Stockton native. I like Nick, uh, Nick's little bro, you know what I mean? How can you not like him? He's, he's, like a, he's like a little cholo gangster from the hood. But at the same time, but at the same time he coaches kids to jiu on a Sunday morning and goes on bike rides with the elderly. He makes gun signs with the right hand and animal balloons with the left hand. So I, 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 I'm a, you're a credit to the community. They want you to give us a quick count to 10, both of you gentlemen, if you don't mind, just if you wouldn't mind counting to 10. They can only count to five. <laughs> <laughs> count the five, Nate, will you, if you can? You can't. Hurry up with that coffee. Count, how about and that? hurry up with that coffee. However, McGregor's cockiness backfired when they entered the cage at UFC 196. McGregor fired on all cylinders in round one, rocking Diaz multiple times and bloodying him up but failing to finish him. In round two, McGregor was exhausted from landing numerous punches on Diaz's face. Diaz took advantage of McGregor's waning cardio, hurting him on the feet before choking him out on the mat. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Nate Diaz! The champ was down but not out. Uh, you know, it stings, it stings real bad, but this is the fight business. I've been on the end of many defeats in my, in my life and I've rose back, so I will not shy away from it. Um, I will not make excuses for it. I will assess it and then, uh, come back. McGregor returned like a true champion, defeating Diaz in the rematch by a majority decision, winning the lightweight belt, and securing a $100 million boxing match with Floyd Mayweather. However, McGregor's success would soon come crashing down. The build-up to the UFC 229 lightweight title fight between undefeated Fenham, Khabib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor turned dark and unfortunate as the Irishman disrespected Khabib's family, religion and personal choices. For the love of this, to come and shut this man up, a little rat, a little weasel, a little hard man in groups, I've met many of them through my years. A man who grows in numbers, but on, on his own and when confronted in a similar situation, cowers away. And that's what you saw with that little on the bus over there. He his jocks after, after doing something to a, his own country man. Uh, that had nothing got to do with anything. And, and, and that's it. I came back for the love of fighting and the love of war. And this I am going to truly, truly love. Khabib stayed quiet until the night before their fight. While round one of their fight saw little action, Khabib shocked everyone by knocking McGregor down. In round four, Khabib choked McGregor out, forcing him to tap. Now, I empathize with McGregor, but losses are a part of life even for the biggest stars in the sport. Speaking of which, let's move on to the next fighter who got humiliated because of his cockiness. Joe Harding faced Johan Sagers in an amateur title fight in February 2017. In the early part of the fight, Harding found major success, landing his shots effectively. However, after a while, he began mocking his opponent and dancing inside the octagon. Unfortunately, his dance party came crashing down when Sagers delivered a crushing head kick, leaving Harding looking more like a dance fail meme than a fighter. Although this humiliating defeat must have been hard to swallow for Harding, it didn't lead to thoughts of ending it all like it did for women's goat, Ronda Rousey. When we're talking about Ronda Rousey, we're talking about a woman who paved the way for every girl that fights in the UFC today. In the UFC, Rousey reached the heights of fame and success, defending her title six times by breaking arms with her trademark armbar submissions. 
but like many successful champions, she started believing in a godlike sense of invincibility until she met the preacher's daughter, a multiple-time boxing world champion. I can't really be aggressive right away, and um, because Holly's a counterpuncher and she has a reach advantage on me, and she's the kind of person that I have to be a lot more careful with and a lot more methodical and set things up. That being said, she's a 19-time boxing world champion, not MMA world champion, and I believe that I'm better than every other girl in every area of MMA. MMA striking is different, and I think I'm the best at it. The pre-fight trash talking led to an intense face-off and heightened animosity. Holly Holm was a massive underdog when she battled Rousey at UFC 193, but she beat the odds as well as her opponent. Rousey was in a seriously bad state after the loss. I was like uh, in the medical room and I was like down in the corner, I was sitting in the corner and I was like, what am I anymore if I'm not this? And I was literally sitting there and like thinking about killing myself in that exact second. I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm like, what do I do anymore? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, stay humble and keep fighting.